Uh, my name is Ellen Spear. I'm the owner of Lakeshore Speech Therapy and a speech language pathologist, and I've been one since 1995. Yikes. Um, I have five kids, but they're all, my youngest is a senior in high school. So I'm, yeah, they're on three in college and one out of college already. I can't believe time flies. So just be ready because that time flies and, and still I have social skill issues with my college age kids. So, you know, it never ends. Never. Um, but anyway, I'm happy to be here to present this. I think it's, you know, pretty common sense information, but just stuff things that you already may be doing and then some things you might be able to add or take away that will help just make the holidays a little bit less stressful um, on your children and on you. Um, so that's what this is all about. Just as I said before, the holidays are a fun and exciting time, but can also be overwhelming and confusing for children who struggle with communication and social skills. Um, so what we're gonna do today is help navigate some social situations, some of the hidden rules, and potential problems related to the holidays. Okay, so what are we going to talk about? We can, we're going to probably cover more than this, but in general, we're going to go over holiday parties, um, hand, handling holiday outings and shopping, giving and receiving gifts. I know that is a big one for a lot of parents, like how to help your kids show that they're grateful or if they don't like the gift, which a lot of times can happen, and how to share gifts, how to receive gifts, that, that can be a big problem and any area of stress for the parents I've found. Um, and then the final one is we're gonna talk about how to make conversation with relatives and friends, and especially those that um, our kids are not familiar with or only see maybe during the holiday times. How can we make that a more comfortable situation? Um, uh, well, let's start with number one. It's really important to prepare your child. Let him or her know what is gonna happen there, where you're gonna be, who's gonna be there, what you'll be eating. Um, all those things are really important information. Hey, we're going to Aunt Linda's tomorrow. There's gonna be a lot of kids there. Um, and, you know, Uncle Larry and Grandma and Grandpa, those are the people that are gonna be, are gonna be there. Um, we're gonna have turkey, but if you don't like that, I'm gonna have your chicken nuggets with you. you know, kind of look to potential problems. You know that they're not gonna like that what's being served, so you look to the potential problem. I'm gonna put your chicken nuggets in my bag so that we have them. Um, so I can't say it enough, prep is huge. Um, if you have pictures of the people that are gonna be there um, on your phone, easy way. I'm gonna show you pictures of who's gonna be there, especially if it's people they haven't seen in a while, always good so that they aren't walking into um, unfamiliar faces. Oh, mom showed me her picture. I recognize her from the picture on there. So that is a number one, always really helpful. And a lot of times we don't do that in the chaos. We just put our kids in the car, let's go, we're moving, trying to get them all dressed. So that can take place, you know, the week before, a couple days before. Um, what's expected and unexpected. So it's expected that you use nice words with your cousins. It's expected that you say hi, you don't have to have a long conversation. Um, it's expected that you try the dinner. Um, you know, use role-playing, um, do some pretend and some problem-solving activities. You know, what would happen if Aunt Linda gives you a gift that you don't like? Um, and we're gonna get to that later, but just kind of giving the expectations of what um, is gonna make everybody feel calm, including your child. Um, and role play, it, it may not feel comfortable. Once you get into it, it's kind of easy. Um, just kind of, let's pretend, let's pretend you're seeing Aunt Linda. What would you say? What would she maybe say to you? Um, those kinds of things, they can be really helpful um, in taking the anxiety out of you know walking through that door. Um, Next, be aware of the sensory inputs such as lights, noises, and smells, and try to minimize or introduce slowly. Even in your own home, blinking lights, things that you might find calming in the holidays can be really adverse to some of our, some of our kids. Um, loud noises, the caroling, the singing, um, just watch the volume on those, and even smells. 
um, walking into um, a kitchen that's got something that's been cooking all day can be adverse. So um, again, prepare your kids for that. But also, if you're going to someone's house, you might say to that person, hey, you know, Johnny really doesn't like the bright lights. Can we try to not have the twinkling lights on, you know, when he first comes in, if they're, you know, wanting to put them on after fine, but like when he first comes in, can we kind of keep that, the lights a little low? Um, and the lastly, providing a safe space or retreat from the noise and chaos, super important. Um, so often you can take your child in if it's not at your own home and ask the host, hey, where's a spot where Johnny can go when it gets too loud for him? Where's a place that's a little more quiet? Um, and then bring, bringing toys that he's familiar, he or she's familiar with, your iPad for a video that's a calming video for them. Where is a place when this gets too much, maybe when presents are being opened or things of that nature that you can, you can take your child? As I said, bring a bag of familiar toys or sensory regulation tools. Some kids really like weighted blankets or some kids have a compression vest. Um, some kids have a certain ball or squeezy toy they use. Bring those, um, bring them in a bag um, so that they have some sense of familiarity if they're not at home. Um, really important thing. And I'm gonna show you, I have um, on the next slide, break cards and, and when we did this in person, I actually laminated and printed them out. And that's something you can, if your child it doesn't have communication skills um, or even not in that setting, it's just a break card that they can hand to you and say, hey, I need a break. Um, so you can kind of do that role play. Hey, I'm gonna give you this card when you feel like it's getting too much or it's too loud, try to give me this card and I'll know right away to take you to our safe space where our room is. Um, Next, prepping family and friends. Um, if you aren't comfortable providing details, you know, about specific diagnoses, um, you might offer ideas like Leo's not, it doesn't like hugs, but he really likes high fives. So give an alternative. Um, prep for what, you know, or Leo's not using his words a lot. Um, it's helpful if you use a limited amount of words, just, you know, speak in small sentences. Those kinds of things without giving all the details are often helpful because a lot of your family and friends really have no idea. So they might come, depending on their personality, come really hard and aggressively. If you just give a little bit um, of information, sometimes that's really helpful. Or here's a way to approach him. Here's a way to approach her. Um, that's a really, really important thing to do. And then lastly, um, Enlist a support team. So if, if it's not a spouse, if it's a sister or brother or grandma or grandpa, um, hey, when I need a break, here's the things um, that Leo needs. You know, I, he may need a break. Here's some things to watch for to show that he's, he's getting upset. Um, can you either notify me or here's some, you know, take him to his, you know, his room or, you know, let, let me know. So having a support team, so it's not just you in charge of not only bringing the presents in or the food, but also watching your child um, can be really helpful during the holidays. So right along those lines, handling holiday outings and shopping, especially when going out, if you're going shopping, which I know a lot of people order, at least I do most of mine online right now, but even going into like that mall situation or crowded place, um, being aware of the, of the lights and the noises and the smells and really uh, making your child aware of it and, and minimizing it. You know, maybe saying to yourself, this isn't a great idea for um, him or her to go to. You know, maybe I need to get someone to watch my child because this isn't really something that's gonna work. And just saying to yourself, this is not gonna work um, and not forcing it. Um, avoiding crowds. And I know with COVID, we're doing that anyway, right? So, um, but there's lots of things like instead of going to a crowded place, maybe doing a drive through light display or other options like that, that are just less invasive, less crowded, um, less unexpected things that can happen where you can kind of keep the routine or, or know what to expect next. So when we go to these kind of, you know, um, outings, Sometimes we don't 
we can't anticipate the problems that'll come up. Um, and I know there's activities for the holidays and the Santa. Um, so always know that those resources are available too, to take a look at. And again, like I said before, there's staying home activities that are really holiday friendly and you can control the narrative. Um, around the holidays, a lot of times our kids get out of their routines because they're not, they're not at school. They're not, um, they're going to different places than usual. So keeping that routine is, is helpful for our kids. You can't always do that. We recognize that, but when you can try to. Um, and then finally making swaps and adjustments, you know, shortening the time. So we're going to go here, but it may only be, you know, we anticipate an hour. It may only be 15 minutes um, changing the activity. Like we talked about before making a swap, we're not going to do this. It's too much, but we'll do it on a, a smaller scale, even um, parties, you know, or, or, you know, if they're at your home, it's going to be, you know, make a time frame for them. So we'll break it up a little bit. This is actually one of my favorites. Um, we all know when our kids get a gift and they don't like it. And it's embarrassing when they let the other people know. Again, we use the, often use a term in, in our practice and in social thinking kind of expected and unexpected. So what, what's expected? Let your child know what's expected when they get a gift. You know, uh, whether you like it or you don't, we always say thank you. So give them that, that communication script. Um, if you've already received it and you have, or you have the same gift at home, it's a double still, what do we say? Thank you. So that's like the role playing type of thing. Um, what's unexpected, you know, saying I already got this, or I don't like this. What you want to dial into is how does, how would that make someone feel right? How would that make Aunt Clara feel if she knew that, um, you didn't like it because she really it's coming from her heart. She really wanted to give this to you because she thought you would like it, you know, that kind of thing. So really kind of try to tie it to people's feelings as well. And your child may or may not understand that, but I think um, that's fair to do. Like, let's try to make her feel happy by saying thank you. Um, so when giving gifts, how we can give a script for that as well. This is for you. Giving those simple scripts um, are really helpful for kids that have limited um, words or trouble expressing themselves. So, get, you know, actually practicing it. Um, like I said, when we did that in person, we often, we wrapped up black socks and had the kids kind of practice opening a gift they didn't like. And it's funny, just the look on their faces, but following the script was helpful. Um, sharing gifts is another, especially with siblings, cousins, someone gets a gift that they'd rather have, you know, what are the rules for that? Again, when we do it on the spot, it's it's not, their emotion has already been through the roof on it. So preparing for that to happen is hugely important. Um, talking about sharing gifts, the people that you're with, all right, we're gonna set a timer and that's how we're gonna do it. Using those kind of visuals are sometimes helpful too for sharing. Um, so participating in role play and problem solving. I have, um, I don't know if we can attach it the last packet that we had from last time, but it, it's um, from Teachers Pay Teachers and it's got a whole bunch of problem solving and role play activities that we have passed out previously. Um, it's really, really good. And you guys can go through them and see what would apply, but you know, you really want a Nintendo DS for Christmas, but you didn't get it. What's the problem? What's the solution? What's expected? Um, so using those kinds of packets, you don't have to invent it. You can kind of just look through it and say what would be appropriate for my child. So um, using social stories, which we're going to, I'm going to show you next. Um, and even video, like using those movie clips. Um, I've used a ton from Elf. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers the burping at the table, but I've showed my kids that one, like not okay, unexpected. Um, so those are all things that you can do that, to make that easier. Um, and then some of our kiddos have trouble with even opening the presence with their fine motor skills. So be aware of that. If your child has difficulty with that, minimizing the tape, don't have to do the tightest bows on there, um, unsealing envelopes, those kinds of things can decrease stress too. So this is an example of a simple social story. 
Um, during Christmas, I'll get gifts. After I open a gift, I should find the person who gave it to me. I can say thank you or give them a hug. If I don't like the gift, I will still smile and say thank you. That will make the person who gave me the gift feel good. I can put the gift away until later after I say thanks. So that's just a simple one you can share. Um, I had a little kiddo that I worked with and we worked on this um, before Christmas because mom said it was going to be an issue. Well, she was so cute. She got it. But when she got the gift she didn't like, which was a book, she turned to her grandma and said, Mrs. Spear says if I get a book or a present I don't like, I should smile and say thanks. So she looked at her, she smiled and said thanks, but she explained it at a little bit too much detail. So it was really cute. She said, oh, she didn't like it. She kind of had the right idea, not completely. So these kinds of things are really great, simple to the point, easy to pull out and review before you go somewhere. Um, there's also one and it's in the packet we can send the PDF. The next one I think I did was receiving or giving gifts, but there's also one for sharing. Um, so during Christmas, I will give gifts to other people. I will give gifts that are big and some that are small. Not every present is for me. That's a big one, <laughs> big, big, big one. Um, when I give someone a gift, I can say, here's a gift for you and I'll feel happy because I made someone else happy. So again, tying emotions to it. Look, you made someone so happy by giving a gift. Um, sometimes that's just enough to, for kids to figure it out. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna talk about before questions is um, making conversation. Again, that can be really challenging, especially with um, family that we have not seen in a while. This is when role play is really effective. Pretend to be family members and friends in different situations. Um, even just doing the initial greetings, using video modeling of, of interactions with, um, with family members, or there's some video modeling, if you looked it up on YouTube and said, you know, Christmas greetings, they, they have a lot of those social videos on YouTube that you can look up. So that's an effective way to do it for some kids that are really visual learners. Um, introduce and implement a friend file. So what a friend file is, is for instance, if, if he's gonna see his cousin, Johnny, Leo is going to see Johnny. So, he, so you say, Leo, you're gonna see your cousin, Johnny tomorrow night. Do you remember some things that Johnny likes and likes to talk about? Well, Johnny plays baseball. Yes, Johnny's on the baseball team. So when you saw, see Johnny, you can ask him, how's baseball going? So you can actually Practice what kind of questions you'd ask. What else does he like? Oh, he has a dog, a new dog. Okay, well, we can ask some questions about his dog. So um, making kind of a file, presenting a picture with it on your phone is a good way to help those conversations happen. Um, being there for the initial part of the conversation is always helpful and kind of um, giving some cues and prompts. Um, Again, prepping family members and friends for ways to engage in conversation is really, really helpful too. So we always try to prepare our child, but preparing other family members and friends is, is a really good way too. You know, Leo's not a big talker. You can say hi, if you can show him things, sometimes that's helpful, um, not just using words. He's a visual learner. So, you know, giving some pictures is a good way too, or using, you know, props. So always good to do. So I just gave some examples of holiday conversation starters, and I have a bunch in this packet that, you, that we're going to download, the Christmas Pragmatics, but, you know, giving your child an idea of what they might be able to ask, get, actually thinking about it, practice saying it, is a great way to prep and get more conversation. What is a conversation starter? Um, so just gave you some ideas of that, you know, have you seen a reindeer? What's your favorite Christmas movie? Um, do you have colored or white lights on your tree? Um, that kind of thing. What's your favorite food on Thanksgiving? Those are all good conversation starters. And this is, I think this is definitely Teachers Pay Teachers and it is Jenna Rayburn. I want to give her copyright, um, since we're not selling them, I think it's okay, um, for us to upload the PDF. Um, and then I just gave you some of the resources I use just to look through um, 
The other thing is boom cards. They're online. There's a lot of different activities on there for the holidays. So expected and unexpected behaviors for the holidays. If you put in holiday social skills in there, they will pop up a lot of the activities. And, and a lot of them, if you put find free in there, some of them are, you have to buy and they're not typically that expensive, but some of them are free. Um, and so there's a lot of, lot of good resources there that I use in therapy, but I tell parents about all the time as well. So those are the two things I, I would say to go to when you're looking for resources.